Hello everyone, we are back with another interesting topic on the Salesforce industry series that is the velocity series. In this video, we will talk about how we can overwrite the next button of an Omniscript step. So let's start. So starting with the basics, what is overriding Omniscript element? So Omniscript element lighting web component is like you can customize an Omniscript element by extending its elements LWC. Right? What is the use of overriding an Omniscript element? We can add our custom behavior and styling to the Omniscript element while maintaining its core functionality. It's so like uh, the Omniscript element has a lot of functionalities and you want to modify some part of it and you want to keep all the functionality as it is, then you can override it and uh, use the existing functionalities as well as modify some of the functionalities. So uh, which all Omniscript elements we can uh, override? So you can find a list of uh, components with their JavaScript methods that you can override and you can download it from this article link here. I'll show you, I'll open this article link, then I'll show you. So let's not waste any time. Uh, we will see a demo on how to override the next button of an Omniscript step. Uh, it's a very common use case to override the next button. Usually we have, to, sometimes you have to perform validations and stop the user from moving to ne next step if those validations fail. So we will, uh, how would we override the next button? We would override uh, the set values of Omniscript and it will then act as the next next button. If you know, like if you drag and drop a set values to an Omniscript step, it then acts like a button. And then we would override the set values of the Omniscript and then we will do our necessary validations before the user can move to the next step. So now I am in my org, I have created a new Omniscript that is the next button underscore override. And if I'll open this step, in this step, uh, this is our first step and this is our second step. So in the first step, I have a custom LWC named Omniscript next button check. And uh, I have a, a combo box. This combo box has two options, yes or no. This combo box asks like, do you want to allow to move to next step? If I select yes and I click on the next button, I would be able to move to next step. If no, then I won't be able to move to the next step. Then uh, what I have done is if I select this step and I go to button properties, I have uh, removed the next button width. I have uh, made the next button width to zero so that the standard next button can be removed. Then I drag and dropped uh, a set value. So uh, how you can drag and drop, just search for set values and drag and drop this component, this set values to here. So if you drag and drop it, it will act as a button. So if I click on this next button, you can see it's a set value properties and uh, you can override the set values with this LWC. I've overridden the set values with this LWC, which is named set values override. I'll show this LWC like what is actually present in this LWC. And but before that, let me show you how this Omniscript would work. I have added this Omniscript to the account record page. So let's let's test it how it would work. So it, it is saying, do you want to allow to move to the next step? If I select yes, then I am on the next step. Now, if I go back and I select no, it throws an error. You are not allowed to move to the next step. So let's say like you have some other inputs as well. And before user needs to move to the next step, you need to perform some validations. So it's like if the user has selected no, uh, throw an error that you are not allowed to move to the next step. So uh, now let's go back to the Omniscript and let's see what's present in the code. So firstly, as I told you, our set values will act as a button and as the next button. And you can see I have overridden the set values with the set values override. Okay, so I have opened the help article. In this help article, you can see that uh, it is about how you can extend an Omniscript elements LWC. That means how you can override an LWC of an Omniscript element. Here you can see that we have uh, components for the Omni Studio package and we have it for the Velocity package. So Velocity and Omni Studio are two different packages. So you can download uh, the first link. After you download the first link, it will open you uh, this file. So in this file, we have two folders. One is examples. Examples shows how, how we can overwrite the Omniscript elements. And the second one is the Omni base elements. So Omni base elements are uh, those elements which we can override. So uh, 
uh, as I told you, we will override the set values element. So I'll search for set values. So, okay, so I got this, this is a Omniscript set values. So I can Omniscript, I can override, that means I can override the Omniscript set values. So it tells me that the Omniscript set values components provide functionality for setting values. Uh, these are the methods that, uh, that this uh, set values provide. But you can see this line that set values is inherited from the Omniscript base action. So uh, many of your Omniscript components are inherited. So it's like if it is inherited from the Omniscript base action, we can go to Omniscript base action and we can choose that uh, Omniscript base actions method as well. So this is the Omniscript base action. And if I open the readme file for it, so this is the readme file of the Omniscript base action. In this, we can see that we can override the execute method of the Omniscript base action. So this, me uh, this method, API method that starts the action execution. So this method basically, when you click on the set values, this is the method that executes the logic, like what happens in the backend. So if we uh, override the set values and we override this execute method, I think we would be able to override the next button. So let's see how we can do it. So uh, okay, so I'm in my uh, set values override component. So this set values override component, as you remember, I told you like if I go back to my Omniscript um, and show you like this next button is overridden by set values override method. So uh, uh, here is the LWC for it. So to override the um, set values, firstly, you have to override the connected callback of it. In the connected callback, you need to call its super dot connected callback. Since you are extending the Omniscript set values, this Omniscript set values will have its own connected callback. So basically, this is a file that is the parent. We are extend this our uh, current LWC extends from this parent. So firstly, in our connected callback, we have to call the parents connected callback so that nothing breaks. Uh, now, um, so uh, as you remember in Apex as well, we we have the uh, overriding method. So in the parent, we will have the execute method. So instead of using the parents execute method that is coming from the Omniscript set values, I have overridden this method, execute method. And uh, when I click on the uh, uh, on the set values, I, it will call this execute method. So what this execute method will do? So it will make a pubsub.fire and this pubsub.fire will, uh, this will fire our event check move step and in the other LWC, I have subscribed to this event. So in this LWC, I have registered pubsub.register, uh, check move step and move step. And once you receive this event, call the event handler method. So after you, you click on the next button, it will fire an event and this event is registered in Omniscript next button check LWC. Where is this LWC? So you can see, I, if you remember, I have added this custom LWC here and the name of this is Omniscript next button. The name of this is Omniscript next button check LWC. So how is the logic coming up? Okay. So um, when this component gets loaded, it has a getter here. So I'm showing a getter. So this getter gets called in this getter. I'm calling the subscribe to event method. This subscribe to event will register the met this uh, pops up. Like whenever the check move step is called execute the execute handler in the execute handler. I'm checking if uh, this dot omni JSON data dot step one and this dot omni JSON data dot step one dot value of the next step is yes. If it is yes, then only move to the omni next step. Otherwise throw an exception that you are not allowed to move to the next step. So awesome. If you don't know what is Omni JSON data and what is Omni next step. I had already created a video previously, which will help you in understanding these concepts. So that's all for today's video. And uh, that, I hope you like the demo and do subscribe to my channel for more such videos in the future. Thanks everyone.